I've been living in barefoot shoes for six months now. It's been a mix of breakthroughs and challenges. Some things have been really great and some things have really sucked. Hey, I'm Froze and this is my barefoot shoe journey. It all started for me when I developed plantar fasciitis whilst training for my first ultra marathon. My doctor's advice was for me to wear orthopedic insoles. Now this didn't sit well with me because I suspected that the reason I was suffering was because my feet were getting weaker and they were getting weaker because I was wearing supported shoes all the time. Adding even more support seemed counterintuitive and I suspected would make my feet weaker. So I decided to go against the grain and try barefoot shoes. Barefoot shoes are designed to mimic walking barefoot while providing minimal protection. They have thin soles, no heel elevation, and a wide toe box to allow your toes to spread naturally and are super flexible. Unlike most traditional shoes, which are by comparison quite rigid. The idea is to enable your feet to move as if you were not wearing shoes at all, strengthening the foot and ankle muscles, improving gait and overall improving posture over time. The past six months has been quite the experience for me. There are many advocates for the barefoot lifestyle, but my experience so far has been quite the roller coaster. It certainly has not been a straightforward success story. Before we get into the details, if you're intrigued by the ups and downs of my continuing story, please do hit that like and do subscribe. Now let's get started with the challenges. First up, the ground impact. It was a jolt to my system. Every step felt like the ground was hitting back especially tough for my plantar fasciitis. In month one, I spent around five hours walking around Amsterdam one day, and by the end of it, my feet felt broken. Then came the ankle pains. Unlike others who might experience knee or back issues, my challenge was with my ankles. They ached during runs, and even when I was lying in bed sometimes. It was concerning and pretty debilitating at the time, and I'm still getting ankle pain, but nowhere near as severe as it was before. When autumn arrived, boy, did I know about it chill blades. The lack of insulation and insole in my day-to-day -day barefoot shoes meant my toes were absolutely freezing, which ultimately led to painful puffy toes. It was a pretty unpleasant couple of weeks, but luckily the weather has warmed up a little bit and I also think my toes are getting used to the cold. Another oddity was my foot slap. My steps became louder, especially downhill. It felt like I was losing control of my feet. I've started some specific exercises to strengthen my foot muscles, hoping to improve this, but so far I'm still Mr. Slappy when I'm walking down a hill. One of the most concerning physical things was the pins and needles that I started getting around month four. I'd wake up in the morning with pins and needles in my feet. I'd have pins and needles walking anywhere. It was a really odd, peculiar sensation. And I started worrying that I had some sort of nerve damage in my feet. Luckily for me, this has started to diminish, but it hasn't fully gone away yet. So maybe one of the obvious consequences of transitioning out of barefoot shoes has been the change in my foot shape. My feet have definitely got wider with all that extra space that barefoot shoes have given them. The unintended consequence of this has been the cost. It's meant that I've had to replace my hiking boots, my trail shoes, my road shoes, my day-to-day -day trainers, my work shoes, and my casual shoes. This has been expensive. Well, they were some of the challenges I've experienced with transitioning to barefoot shoes. Let's start taking a look at some of the positives. The biggest benefit for me thus far has been in my battle with plantar fasciitis, especially my left foot, which is around 90% better, but my right foot is still not there yet. I have to say that I have also been seeing a fantastic sports therapist, who by the way, is also an advocate of barefoot shoes. Their support combined with my barefoot shoes seems to be the winning formula. As someone that's been practicing yoga for the last 10 years, I've found that since wearing barefoot shoes, my single leg balance has significantly improved. Now you may have heard other people talking about how barefoot shoes allow them to feel the ground underneath them. And now that's certainly true, but I would describe it as a whole new sensory experience. Just taking a walk in these woods, for example, I can feel the ground underneath me, but my feet are sending me signals constantly telling me what the ground is like, what my surroundings are like, and even how I'm walking. It's made me a lot more conscious about how I set my feet down, etc. It's really fantastic. Now, I don't really want to lose any of you with this comment, but I am far more connected to my environment and I absolutely love it. So after six months, do I regret my decision of going with barefoot shoes? 
not in the slightest. I still have my challenges and there's still some pain and there's still some weird stuff going on, but ultimately I'm really looking forward to seeing what the next six months brings. For me, the benefits hopefully will totally outweigh the challenges and issues that I've had so far. If you're on a similar journey or considering barefoot shoes for yourself, I'd love to hear from you. Share your experiences, tips or questions in the comments below. And if you're curious about my continuing barefoot journey, make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.